The alien species seen in the many depictions of the War of the Worlds go by many names. The Martians, more Taxons, Mollusks, Soft Fingers, and the Invaders. No matter what you decide to call them, they are undoubtedly a monstrous and destructive species, hellbent on their domination of planet Earth. In today's video, I wanted to cover these aliens in their own species series, because there are so many different depictions of these creatures, I will be drawing from many different depictions and trying to make it all fit. Discarding information that I think is unrealistic and trying to weave together a single image of these cosmic invaders. For the sake of simplicity, I will be referring to the species as the invaders. Now, the invader species is physiologically very similar to how their technology appears in various medias. The invaders possess large, elongated dome-like heads that sit upon a small torso that connects to three very long and slender legs and two small arms that hang ever so slightly down from the bottom of the torso, very similar to a xenomorph queen. Each of the five limbs possess themselves three digits that assist them in manipulating objects and manoeuvring their environment with great skill and efficiency. Their tripodal uh, limb structure is something that is carried over to their fighting machines, with them also sharing the nickname of tripods. Their skin is a mixture of light greys and darker shades of green around the creases of their outer layers. They would appear to have a considerable amount of strength in their three powerful legs to assist them in stabilising their very large uh, weighted head. The invaders themselves are around the size of your average bear. Their overly large brains have assisted in their rise to the dominant species of their world and allowed them to advance to a point where they can begin to conquer the stars. In terms of the creature's living habits, and uh, requirements, we start to get into some more interesting territory. The invaders seem to need to live with some kind of orange liquid. We know this as their tripods seem to be filled with the substance, indicating to us that they may be a semi-aquatic creature, and may need the substance to maintain, maintain their alien form of hydration. We know for a fact that the invaders have only ever left their tripods for only brief amounts of time before needing to return. This may be a result of the Earth's climate being too dry or something for the creatures, or being absent of a specific chemical, with them needing to periodically re-soak themselves in the orange liquid. We see that an invader during the event ending events of the 2005 film uh, depiction climbs out from its heavily damaged tripod to short that shortly after losing this liquid and being exposed to Earth's climate, quickly appears to lose all moisture to its skin with the creature shriveling and dying as a result. In addition, this creature was also sick with the pathogens present on Earth, which could have contributed to how quickly this process occurred. We are not sure what these creatures eat although their mouths would seem to suggest that they do have some sort of um, digestive system. However, um, judging by their body size, I would have to say it is very simplistic. However, it's also possible that their, their orange liquid acts as a nutrient source and substitute for their normal eating habits. We know for a fact that the invaders can breathe in our atmosphere and must so be able to respire atmospheric nitrogen and oxygen. Apparently the invaders are asexual and reproduce through growing polyp-like offspring that grow from their bodies and slowly develop before falling off to continue their development into maturity. Now, if not uh, the most important factor to talk about when considering the invaders biology is their immune system. It's not made abundantly clear what the reason is that the invaders basically have no immunity to earth pathogens. Whether it simply be due to them having no specific immunity to earth pathogens, no immunity at all, or possibly they didn't expect there to be any pathogens present on earth. The last option is likely the most realistic, as if they had knowledge of pathogenic microorganisms, they should have prepared for that reality before invading. 
So it's likely that their home world is absent of pathogenic microorganisms, either by their doing or some kind of extinction of their microorganisms. The invaders, while very intelligent, appear to live their lives to a survival instinct, to grow and to spread with little emotional acknowledgement for the species they are using to terraform and colonize other worlds. It is likely that the invaders do not possess the brain capacity for emotional or empathetic thinking. The exact homeworld of the invaders is unknown, and it is also unknown if they have colonized multiple worlds across the stars. However, it could be possible, and probably more so possible, considering the sufficient level of technology and uh, proficiency in the abilities of the invaders, especially when it comes to their Earth invasion. Despite not knowing where they came from, we, we at least know that they were not in fact from Mars, as previously assumed. And if anything, Mars was simply a staging ground for a future attack on Earth and or a previously colonized. And it's also possible that Mars could have been a previously colonized world that they eventually stripped clean of all its resources. And that is specifically a problem that seems to be inherent to their species, where the planets they inhabit and colonize can never really last for all that long, as they quickly run out of their resources from the invaders bleeding them dry, using up everything there is before preparing to move on to the next world. So in my opinion, it's very likely their homeworld suffered the same fate and is now uninhabitable. They could have colonized and laid waste to dozens of worlds before Earth. But either way, they had been planning this attack for a very long time, considering that their tripod fighting machines were buried deep below the surfaces of Earth. So the most logical explanation is that they scout out worlds many, many years before an attempted colonization. They seed their tripods there for when they are ready to invade and prepare for that particular planet's dominant species population to reach a sufficient scale. The invaders would seem to have the technology to extract certain chemicals from their livestock victims. In the case of Earth's invasion, they harvested humans, extracting our blood and using it presumably to fuel the growth of a terraforming organism that they introduced to the planet. Presumably, this red root or weed-like organism begins to convert the planet to a more hospitable environment for the invaders. Sadly for the invaders, as previously stated, they were not prepared for the pathogenic microorganisms present in abundance on Earth. And so, they all died rapidly after their exposure to Earth's atmosphere, which was flushed with these pathogens, meaning that only days after they began their invasion that had been planned for possibly hundreds of thousands or millions of years on Earth, the entire invasion party and their terraforming weeds had been killed by the foreign bacteria that they had absolutely no immunity to. The invaders do in fact have their own written language and it would be assumed that they can verbally or somehow telepathically communicate. The only real example of their written language is on their tripod fighting machines, which don't give us the best grasp of their culture, background or really anything. They also speak very little to each other and I would assume that they only really converse when absolutely necessary. The fact that they reproduce asexually, they choose to communicate only when needed, uh, their simple biology, their disconnect from other living uh, creatures and species has forged these creatures into something dark and psychopathic that is ruthless and unrelenting in their goals despite the repercussions. And so when we talk about their culture, what really is to be said about it? They are robotic or at the very least, survivalists. They do not worry themselves with entertainment, worries or pastimes, or anything else like that. The invaders are focused. They have a goal and will work only to further that. The goal is to survive and to keep on surviving. They are willing to move heaven and earth to transform both into a blood-soaked nightmare in order to do so. They have a complete disregard for the livestock they harvest. No empathy, 
no remorse. In a way, the invaders are a dark and cynical version of what humans may become one day. Humans living in our ever more corporate and survivalist world are more and more fending for ourselves, looking out for any amount of resources and people to use at our expense to get where we need to go and oblivious, or at the very least dismissive, of the destruction we live in our wake. So then, is this what humanity will one day become? Self-centred, ruthless overlords that will burn through our resources here on Mother Earth until she has nothing left to give, and then leave her like a passing thought, only to continue to repeat our mistakes throughout the cosmos. The main thing that led to the invaders' destruction is their shift to over-industrialization and technological reliance. So much that, when they came into contact once again with a world that was a wellspring of life, it killed them. Are we destined to follow that path? To leave life behind? Cursing ourselves, as if we ever encounter it again elsewhere in the universe, our old friend will look at us with sore eyes, deem us a violation, and bring about our cleansing. Before I go, I just wanted to let you guys know about the merch store called Acheron's Colonial Marketplace. Here, you can pick up a variety of Acheron and Alien themed merch from three distinct product lines, including shirts, hoodies, mugs, blankets, stickers, bags, and even phone cases. So if you want to support the channel and look good doing it, pick up some Acheron merch. But what other videos would you guys like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions you would like answered, please meet me down in the comments. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and go check out Project Acheron on Twitter and Discord. If you want to support me further, you can become a patron where you can get access to early and behind the scenes content. The monthly and alien day giveaways, as well as the patron only engraved set of items. I hope you guys did enjoy the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Until then, this is Project Acheron, signing off.